Ciao, I'm Giulia. Welcome to today's class. Today a super fun topic, how to change the shape of objects in Photoshop. Now, why is this technique useful? Because in food, sometimes it's not realistic to find the perfect item. You know, you cannot sometimes bake the perfect macaron. You cannot sometimes find the perfectly shaped chocolate or the perfectly shaped strawberry or whatever it is that you're trying to shoot. So sometimes it's useful to lend a hand to nature and help, you know, with, uh, with shaping things. Um, so learning this technique will allow you to improve the look of your subjects and give it a polished uh, feel and mood. So because food is not like cats, so they cannot, it cannot change shape, but you can use Photoshop to help along the way. For example, especially if you're shooting for like advertising clients or even for yourself, but you want uh, to achieve that perfect uh, look, um, then uh, this tool is very, very useful. For example, this shot of macarons that uh, I, I did, I also baked these. It took me four attempts to get <laughs> to get to this. And at the end of the day, I was like really frustrated because I couldn't just get the perfect macaron. So I started with something like this, which is okay, good enough. Yes, I admit. But can you see all these bumps and things? I wasn't really happy with that. So I used Photoshop to go from this to this. Ah, oh, brilliant, smooth, perfect, pretty, ah, oh, all the things. So uh, there are other few shapes like that bump over there, this bump over here that I adjusted in Photoshop and I will show you the exact process I went through. Uh, sometimes when you shoot for advertising clients, for example, this is a chocolate client of mine. They will not be happy with something like this. Uh, the shape here is irregular. The chocolate has got a, a bump there. It's not perfectly round. So it's your job as a photographer to reassure them that you can get from this to this. What tools do we use in Photoshop to achieve this? We use ta -da, the liquify tool, a godsend. <laughs> so let's jump into Photoshop so I can show you how to do it. Here we are in Photoshop. So we are going to start with uh, the macaron image. As you can see uh, here, the main issue that I have th with this picture is the shape of the main hero macaron here that it's not even and here it's not smooth. I want to make it nice and round also because I want my images to be polished to a very high standard. I am also going to fix that bump over here and I'm going to fix that bump over there and possibly this guy here. So, <laughs> uh, but yes, again, main issue here is this guy. So uh, let's have a look at how to do that. Go ahead and uh, click on your background layer and duplicate that layer. We call this layer liquify. So we know that this is the layer we're going to uh, apply our filter. Now liquify is a filter. So you will find into filter liquify. And Photoshop will open a new window. This is the liquify window where you're able to uh, work on your image. So let's have a look at it. Uh, you press Z on your keyboard to activate the zoom tool so you can zoom in and probably look at what you're doing. And then here on the left hand side, there are a few tools available to us. There's the forward warp tool. This one, you basically push things in. So you can do stuff like that. You can see how uh, I can push things in, push things out, and it will just basically warp uh, warp things. So obviously this is not what you want, so we go back to zero. Um, but this can be used, for example, to adjust, can you see that little bump over there? If you just do it nicely, there you go. In two clicks, that shape is kind of adjusted. So 
this is what the warp tool does. Uh, the reconstruct tool is basically like command Z. It's, <laughs> it's a, it, if you brush it on top, it will come back to its original shape. So nothing is destructive with this tool. This one is quite fun. It will allow you to just uh, spiral things, <laughs> as you can see. So this one can be used to, for example, adjust the um, angle of something. Obviously, I'm now doing it quickly and badly, but just like to give you an idea and show you how you can, with this tool, rotate uh, objects. Again, now we're going to use the reconstruct tool to just uh, go back to our original raspberry here. This guy, it sucks things in, so it will make your object shrink. Do you want to uh, shrink something and make it a little bit smaller? Then this is the tool for you. This one does the opposite. It enlarges things, so if you want to make something bigger, or look more um, juicier. You can use you can use it to make this raspberry look uh, more, you know, bigger or more plump, or like give it a, just a little bit more plof to it. So these are the main tools that are useful in food photography. Now we are just going to go back to we clicked on restore all to just start over basically we go back to this is the the forward warp tool or press w on your keyboard is the one that i use the most um, is the easiest to use and the one that you have more control over now here on the panel on the right you can adjust this uh, the brush size so that's very small versus very big uh, you can also adjust the brush sides by pressing the square brackets on your keyboard. That's That makes it easier for you. Density is how much the brush will actually push. So how strong the push will be, the liquify will be. Pressure, the more you press, the more it will push something. Um, and the higher this is, it means the, the, the least effort when you press to move the object. If it's like on, on one, then you need to really like, oh yeah, that's too much. You really need to like do it many times to achieve the same uh, effect as you had it on like a hundred, in which case only one stroke would allow me to push it in really hard. So adjust these, having a lower pressure generally works best, something in the middle, so that it gives you control, so that one brush stroke will not make the images weird. Um, and it allows you to have more control over that. So now we go restore all, we go back to, we reset everything, and we start uh, brushing. Again, we have our work tool selected. I'm happy with the size, I'm happy with the density, again, just about a half, and then you adjust from there. The size, there we go. So I just want to adjust the shape, the other shape of that macaron. So I'm just going to push that in, bump, bump in, push that shape there, and ta -da, with two clicks, it's like, it's just nice and smooth now. And I'm pretty happy with that. Now, this part is a little bit more tricky because... Look what happens if I warp this guy, the other guy is going to follow. This is what happens with those memes in Photoshop, like when uh, girls try and look thinner and then you can see behind them, the door is all warped as well. <laughs> so that's exactly what we don't want to happen. So how do we do this without, how do we do this properly? So there are a few ways. You can, uh, instead of going from out in, you can go from in, more in. So we go restore. So we get rid of whatever we've done here. And I will show you again. So we get the warp tool. I will make it smaller so that to affect as little of the outside area as possible. And, and then instead of starting from here and going in, because that's going to warp the outside as well, I'm going to 
do it from just the edge, the inside, which means Photoshop, what it will do, instead of extending this guy, it will only try and extend the white, which is what we want. We don't want uh, to have the other macaron following the shape. We just want basically to increase the white gap between the two macarons. That's, that's what we're trying to achieve here. Um, so with a little bit of patience and a little bit of like precision, that's why I'm all the way zoomed in so that I can see exactly what I'm doing. And as you can see, I'm already getting a pretty good result here. And even if this guy does change its shape a little bit, that's fine. We can always adjust that with the liquify tool. So that's kind of like, I don't know what's happening here, but here I... I can, I think it probably is because my macaron was broken in the first place, uh, but I can adjust that with the clone tool later on. So I am not too worried about that right now. Right now I am just working on the shape, trying to make the shape nice and round here. Uh, there we go. So that's, have a look at this now, and this is the before and that's the right now. So as you can see, I was able to change the shape of this without affecting the shape of this other one too much. So it looks fairly natural. This one looks a lot better and it's just a lot more pleasant to look at. Um, now, if I really wanted to be super picky, I could adjust this line as well to make it a little bit more straight. As you can see, there we go. Again, you can be as picky or as uh, unpicky <laughs> as you want. If you're shooting for stuff like advertising, sometimes you don't have a choice. You, your client will expect you to do stuff like this on, your, on their images just to give them that extra polished look. Um, so basically now I'm pretty happy with this, uh, with the shape of that macaron. And I'm going to move on to, for example, this guy, look at that huge bump. I'm not happy with that. So again, I'm only using the work tool at the moment. I am not changing tools at all. And I'm just gonna click there, give it a little bit of a shape without affecting the back one too much. There we go. Again, before and after, clean that bump. And then there was another bump up there. Look at that. Oh my God, that's ugly. So, da -da 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 -da. and we make that into a pretty, pretty, pretty round shape. Ta -da! Again, you can see, oh, there's another bump here. And I'm going to stop right now because <laughs> I've got OCD and then I'm going to carry on forever. So no, this is just for tutorial purposes. <laughs> um, so, And then you press OK to commit. And here we are. So with the liquify layer visible, this is our final effect. And then without it, that's the before. And this is the after, before and after. So that was super quick. Um, so yeah, there you go. Another quick example I wanna show you here with this chocolate. Um, I already have a liquify filter cause I already worked on this image, but basically that's the after. This is the before you can see this chocolate is not, the shape is not perfectly round. And here there's too much chocolate compared to how much filling there is. So I want to make that more round. And that's what I did with the final image. Uh, but I am going to create another liquify filter and show you again. Another thing is I have a clone layer here. And just to give you like a mind blown thing, this is what the original image looked like. And then with some cloning and patience, <laughs> this is what uh, I ended up with. Again, my client, uh, when you work with commercial brands, they do not accept this. This is not okay for them. They want their product to look as polished as possible. So I am going to duplicate the clone layer and call it uh, Liquify Tutorial, just to differentiate it from the other one. Um, and now we select this layer, go down to filter, and we go to liquify. We're in the liquify panel. Again, we zoom in to just make sure that nothing weird happens here. We can see properly what we're doing. We press, press W on our keyboard, and then with the 
square brackets, we adjust the shape of our brush. And then first thing I want to do is give this filling more justice. So I will adjust the shape and make it more round. As you can see, I'm not doing it from here. I am clicking directly on the on the orange filling because if I did it from here, if I pulled it out, then I would also pull out that chocolate there. Well, I don't want to do that. The only thing I want to warp is the orange filling. So I am clicking directly on the orange filling to change its shape without affecting the brown chocolate layer around it too much. So as you can see, you don't, it uh, like it, it can take very, not very much time. As you can see, like with a few clicks, I've already made it look extra, extra great. Obviously, again, this is for tutorial purposes. If I was doing it for my client, I might spend a little bit more time, but this is just to show you uh, what you can do. And that's the before and that's the after. So brilliant, right? And then another thing we wanted to do here was this guy is a little bit, it's got a little bit of a hunchback. We want to make that more round. So I increase the size of my brush to make sure because if I use a small brush and I go like that, then all I do is create more bumps. While if I use a wider brush, then what I'm doing is I'm changing the whole shape, the, the overall shape, as you can see. So always make sure that you play around with your brush size so that you don't get weird stuff. And again, I don't want to affect my background, what's behind my chocolate too much. So I'm just going to click on the chocolate itself and pull it back a bit to make it just a little bit more round. Again, sometimes sometimes it's good enough. You don't really need to overdo it, just a little bit. There we go. And that's the before and the after. And as you can see, I did affect a little bit of the behind area, but it doesn't really, um, you know, it's not weird. It doesn't look weird, but my chocolate, my hero chocolate looks a lot, a lot better. And then we press OK to commit. And here we are. And that's the before and the after. And this is how you change shape of objects in Photoshop. Super easy and it can make a lot of difference. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and make sure to tune in next time. Ciao!